Ah, uh, Star Wars movies. Films that have captured the hearts, souls, and imaginations of people all over the world. In the last 50 years, we've had 11 movies, all helping to tell one epic story. And this morning, I hopped out of bed thinking to myself, you know what? Today's the day. Somebody cue the music, because in this video, I'm going to rank every single Star Wars movie from absolute worst to absolute best. That's right, 90 videos and literally hundreds of comments begging me later, I'm finally doing it. So without further ado, let's get into it. And coming up first, at the number 11 spot, as the absolute worst Star Wars movie to ever be made, say it with me now, it's Star Wars Episode 8, The Last Jedi. Now, this is not a hot take whatsoever. Despite some, let's just say, passionate individuals on Twitter, I'd say that a good majority of Star Wars fans absolutely hated this movie. And for good reason, I mean, I'm right up there with them. It's honestly kind of hard to think of something that Episode 8 did right. I'm not going to do a whole plot breakdown because that would take hours, but there are plenty of video essays on YouTube that go over every aspect of this movie and just tear it apart. There's this YouTuber I like named Mauler, who made a three-part video essay series breaking down The Last Jedi in its entirety. And if you add up all three of his videos, it comes out to over four and a half hours long. I mean, that's how many issues the movie had. I am going to go over some of the big things that I thought this movie did really, really badly. And there was no bigger disappointment than the absolute and complete destruction of Luke Skywalker and his character. The Luke Skywalker that we knew from the original trilogy was a passionate, optimistic, dedicated young man who saw the good in everybody and refused to give up on somebody no matter how evil they seemed. He was a character that everyone could look up to and learn something from, no matter how young or old you are. So based on that, there's no way that Ryan Johnson would have completely bastardized the character we knew and loved solely for the purpose of subverting expectations, would he? I mean, that's like Sam Sulek not getting a sick chest bump. It just wouldn't happen. Oh dear viewer, I'm sorry to say that that is exactly what happened. Luke is now a grumpy, sad, pessimistic old man. He's given up on everyone and everything he believed in, abandoned the resistance in their time of need, and deserted himself on some random island in the middle of bumfrick nowhere. And the reason that he did all this is because years ago, he almost killed his own nephew in his sleep because he got funky vibes from him. Now, let's just think about this for like two seconds. Does it make sense that the man who didn't give up on Darth Vader, one of the most twisted and vile men in the galaxy, would try to kill his own nephew just because he had nightmares? Anyway, Luke is only a small part of The Last Jedi's overall suckiness. As you might expect, Rey is a total Mary Sue. I mean, she goes to train with Luke on his island, and as far as I can remember, learns literally nothing with him. I mean, literally nothing. Except that she's already super powerful and really dangerous without any training whatsoever, and that getting smacked on the hand with a fern really Really freaking hurts apparently. But then on a separate note, don't even get me started on Finn and Rose's entire useless side quest that ultimately goes literally nowhere. It's just a complete waste of time in every way whatsoever. Oh, who could possibly forget about Admiral Holdo's huge plot hole that she created single-handedly, where she can apparently blow anything and everything up just by going into hyperspace. Huh, that could have been useful information to know for, oh, I don't know, the entire Star Wars saga? Again, I could go on all day and go into huge detail because this movie is just rife with problems, but for time's sake, let's move on to the number 10 spot. Coming in at number 10 is you guessed it, The Rise of Skywalker. This movie is just barely better than The Last Jedi, and there are a few reasons for that which we'll get into. But overall, it's, again, just an entire waste of time. I can sum it up for you in a few words. Our heroes run around the galaxy looking for random MacGuffins. When, shocker, they find the random MacGuffins, <gasps> they go fight Emperor Palpatine, because yes, he is back now. How exactly did he come back, you might ask? Well, uh, somehow. Somehow Palpatine returned. <laughs> Yep, somehow, that's the answer they gave us. That's precisely how he did it. I can't believe I'm even saying this next part, but after he lifts a thousand Death Star Star Destroyers out of the random Sith plant that no one's ever heard of until now, and zaps all the other ships with Force Lightning, Rey says that she is all the Jedi, and kills him again with his own Force Lightning. And there we have it. Half the movie is a random treasure hunt, and the other half is a random duel with no stakes or significance to us as viewers whatsoever. A perfect recipe for a great movie. To be fair, there were a couple things here and there that weren't too bad. I thought that Han Solo and Kylo Ren had a pretty nice moment with each other that gave more finality to Han's death. Even though the entire thing was like some weird funky hallucination in Kylo Ren's brain, I get what they were going for, and I can appreciate that. It was also pretty cool to see Lando Calrissian again. I'd kind of forgotten about him, but he was a surprise to be sure, but a welcome one. Alright, we're gonna break into single digits now, and this opinion might be a little unpopular, but I think that the ninth worst movie in Star Wars is all the way on the other side of the saga, and that is Episode 1, The Phantom Menace. Look, I straight up don't think this movie is very good. I think it does some things well and does have some good parts, but overall, I found it kind of lacking. In my opinion, I think it was just a very weird choice to give us a kid Anakin. I completely understand why they did it, but I think that there were other options for the plot that would have served the prequels a little bit better. Also, I'm a tad biased because I just don't like child actors at all. No offense whatsoever to Jake Lloyd, I think he did fine, and he did not deserve the hate that he got for being a part of this movie. But generally, children in movies are just not my cup of tea. On a separate note, the three bright spots of this movie were Obi-Wan Kenobi, Qui-Gon Jinn, and Darth Maul, and they were all criminally underused. 
Qui-Gon Jinn in particular, I would have liked to see more of. I think he was a really interesting character. Finally, things like Jar Jar Binks and the Gungans as a whole just pissed me off. I found them super annoying. If I had to sum it up, I'd say that the main reason this movie is here on this list is because I think it did a lot of things badly, but also, I just find every other movie in Star Wars to be just a little bit better, just a tad, and I can't really put this one higher. But speaking of other movies in Star Wars that are better, let's move on to number 8, which is the one and only Force Awakens. I think that most people would agree that The Force Awakens is probably the best movie out of the sequel trilogy. It certainly had its issues, and we'll get to those, don't worry, but it also did a few good things right, in my opinion. Princess Leia was given the respect that she deserved, and she was right where she should have been, leading the resistance against the power of the First Order. Also, Finn and Poe were both pretty good characters that I was actually interested in, at least until the next two sequels absolutely squandered them, especially Finn. I mean, man, talk about a downgrade. He went from being the next big Jedi to some random background character. Kind of sad to watch, to be honest. Kylo Ren was actually a really cool villain initially, and he genuinely he seems like someone to be frightened of. He kind of lost some of that mystique and intimidation when he got beat in a lightsaber duel by someone who never even held a lightsaber before, but for a lot of the movie, he's pretty cool. And I will give it to him, his lightsaber is actually sick, I'm a big fan of it. However, two components of the movie just shine through as absolute garbage, and those are Rey and Han Solo. Rey, as you might expect, is a total Mary Sue, who is extremely competent at everything she tries to do. Lightsaber fighting, piloting, using the force, she learns it all in like two seconds. Absolutely no hate at all for Daisy Ridley, she's a good actress and she did the best she could with what she was given. It just so happens that what she was given was absolute trash that deserves to be lit on fire and burned for no one to ever see again. And then there's Han Solo, who at first was great to see again. I mean, we were all happy when he showed up in the Millennium Falcon in the middle of the movie. But then you think about it and you realize, oh wait a minute, he's right back where he started. In the original trilogy, he goes through this awesome journey, from a selfish rogue to someone who would give his life to help a cause greater than himself. So it's kind of really sad to start up in The Force Awakens and see that he's back to his old ways. He's left Leia, he's left Kylo Ren, and now it's just him and Chewie, smoking dope in the Millennium Falcon like Cheech and Chong. It's really sad to see, and it totally brings down the mood of the entire movie. Also, it's almost criminal that we never got a scene with Han, Luke, and Leia all in the same room together. I mean, these are sequels to the original movies. It seems like the bare minimum for this trilogy, and sadly, they robbed us of it. But you know what? Enough of that. Let's move on, and coming up at the number 7 spot actually has a lot to do with Han Solo, because it's none other than Solo, a Star Wars story. Look, I'm gonna be honest here. I like Solo. I think that it's a decent movie, and I don't really understand all the hate for it. All the actors were, in my opinion, really good younger versions of their original characters, and Donald Glover especially was very memorable as Lando. Also, I thought that the way Han met Chewbacca was very well done too. And I know it's not exactly how it went down in Legends, but it's not too far off either. By far the biggest flaw in this movie is the character of Han Solo himself. I didn't think he was bad at all, but if you take a second to think about it, you kind of realize that it lacks understanding of Han's journey. When we first meet him in the original trilogy, he's a rogue scoundrel who looks out for number one. And only after those three movies does he start to become someone who cares about more than just himself. Solo, however, jumps the gun. In the movie, Han is a straight up good guy, someone who cares about doing the right thing, and he simply wouldn't have been at that place yet. Other than that though, there's not too much more I can say. I kind of like Solo, and I think putting it right above the middle of the list works well. Alright, approaching the smack dab middle of this list at number 6 is the one and only Attack of the Clones. Attack of the Clones is one of those movies that has a really bad reputation among Star Wars fans, and even though I kind of get why, I can't say I fully agree. Don't get me wrong, this movie has a lot of faults, and we'll get to those, but it also does a few good things right. First of all, the straight up plot of the movie is just better than The Phantom Menace. I say that with 100% certainty. It's more concise, it flows better, it's more engaging, and it just works better. Ewan McGregor was actually so good as Obi-Wan Kenobi, and I think it's safe to say that he carried the movie, at least to some extent. I mean, show me some someone who says they don't like Obi-Wan and I'll show you a filthy liar. Finally, this is the movie that really gave some background to the Republic, the Clone Wars, and the Jedi Order. Love it or hate it, this movie does do a pretty good job describing what happened before the Empire, and I think that people overlook that. After all, it is a prequel. Its main purpose is to add to and expand upon what happened in the original trilogy. So that's what I think the movie does very well. However, there are some downsides, and I think that most people could tell you what they are. The CGI looks pretty bad for a lot of the movie. I mean, it literally feels like a video game. All the Anakin Skywalker, Padme Amidala romance scenes are really cringy and hard to watch, and there are endless memes about these, I don't think I have to get into that too much. The movie does introduce Count Dooku, who, as you might know if you've watched this channel before, is one of my favorite characters in all of Star Wars. Unfortunately, he is criminally underutilized for the entire prequel trilogy, in fact, so that was a little bit disappointing. But overall, I think that Attack of the Clones is a little overhated, and I'm pretty confident that it belongs here, at the number 6 spot. Alright, so from here on out, all these movies are just great. Like, these next 5 are just objectively some of the best cinema you will find. And surprisingly enough, at the number 5 spot itself, we have Rogue One, which might surprise some of you. I mean, it surprised me, and I made the list. But speaking of surprises, imagine that you're casually chilling with your army of battle droids, and then out of nowhere, some quick-witted buffoon jumps down on you. I think he would, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but I think he'd say something along the lines of, Hello there, everybody! My name is Jedward, and I make tons of videos about Star Wars and other franchises like it. And if you're enjoying this video so far, then do me a favor and smash that subscribe button. Thank you very much, I really appreciate it. As I was saying, Rogue One is not really what you think of when you think of Star Wars. It's gritty, it's more realistic, it's brutal, and everyone dies in the end. 
but in my opinion, those are some of the things that make it so great. It totally takes you by surprise, it shows you the realities of a war against a galactic empire. It also shows how far people are willing to go, and how much they'll sacrifice for the things they believe in. Those are some of the more thematic elements of it, and they are great, but on a more superficial level, the characters are all really interesting, and they're engaging to watch and learn about. Cassian Andor, Director Krennic, and Jin in particular are really good in my opinion. The plot comes together really well, and it's easy to follow, along with looking phenomenal. I mean, the visual effects in this movie are out of this world, literally. <laughs> Finally, this is really superficial, but the icing on the cake for the whole movie is Darth Vader's hallway scene. I mean, he just absolutely starts popping off, and to be honest, I am all for it. Very rarely in Star Wars do we get to see him absolutely obliterate his enemies, so getting to watch him in action is definitely a treat. The reason it's not higher is mainly because all the movies that are coming up are too good to put behind it. But again, this movie is not bad at all, and honestly, I quite like it. But it's simply not as good as the number four movie on this list which coincidentally is the one and only Star Wars Episode 4, A New Hope. When people think of Star Wars, they think of this opening shot. It truly is one of the most influential pieces of cinema to ever be released, and that is not an overstatement. The entire movie is a gem, and there's a reason that it stood the test of time for so long. All of the characters are really well done and really well introduced. This is arguably Obi-Wan Kenobi's best movie, and Alec Guinness killed it. Obviously, we get introduced to Luke Skywalker and Han Solo, who, again, are just icons, and this movie started them off really well. But one of the real crown jewels is Darth Vader. From the instant he walked onto the big screen, he captivated millions. Dressed in all black, with an evil looking mask, and the creepiest breath that anyone has ever heard, there was literally no way that he didn't become a cultural icon instantly. Honestly, there's not even much more that I can say. This movie just rocks, and even though in my opinion it is the worst of the originals, that means nothing, because it is still so good. But speaking of other originals, that reminds me of the next video on this list, which at the number 3 spot is Episode 6, Return of the Jedi. This movie has so much sentimental value to me, and I must have watched it dozens of times growing up, because I have such a place in my heart for it. The Jabba the Hutt scene in the beginning is one of my favorite scenes of all time, and I know it doesn't really make much sense when you think about it, but still, I absolutely love it. I gotta be honest, I don't mind the Ewoks as much as a lot of people, and they actually do fit into the plot kind of well, but they're not a great part of the movie, and I could take them or leave them. I know Harrison Ford absolutely hated them, so that's still kind of funny to me, but regardless. This movie really gets good in the last 30 minutes or so, when Luke and Darth Vader have their epic showdown, and Luke has to make his ultimate choice. It's really impactful to see Vader turn back to the light side and kill the Emperor, bringing balance to the Force and saving his son. The one part of the movie that I really wanted to get your guys' opinion on was George Lucas CGIing Hayden Christensen into the end of the movie as a Force ghost. Personally, I don't mind it, and I think it kind of works, but let me know what you think in the comments. Alright, we're in the top two now, and if you can do math, then you probably know what's coming next, or at least you can narrow it down to the two most likely choices. And that's why it shouldn't be a surprise whatsoever that at the number two spot, we have the best of the prequels and definitely a fan favorite. That's right, it's the one and only Revenge of the Sith. I think that most people who've actually watched it really like this movie, and George Lucas kind of saved the public perception of the prequel trilogy with it. The CGI is good, the characters are awesome, and who can forget that the story is actually really well done and interesting. Also, the entire purpose of the movie is to document the fall of the Republic and the rise of the Empire, along with the creation of Darth Vader, and let's be honest, it does that really well. Order 66 is also one of the most moving scenes in all of cinema, just absolutely heartbreaking, and again, it was executed really well, uh, no pun intended. Finally, the acting in this movie was just all around incredible, from literally everyone. This was the movie that really brought it all together. Especially Hayden Christensen, I gotta be honest. I thought that he was a little lacking in Attack of the Clones, but in Revenge of the Sith, he was just great, so kudos to him for that. Anyway, with that out of the way, we have finally arrived at the number one spot, the best movie in all of Star Wars. I think I said this earlier, but by process of elimination and sheer common sense, you probably know which movie this is. To be honest, you probably knew before you clicked on this video, because you know it, you love it, the single best movie in Star Wars is none other than the legendary Star Wars Episode V, The Empire Strikes Back. This movie is so iconic, and I don't think there is a single Star Wars fan who hasn't loved it. One of the things that makes this movie so great is the character development that it gives to Luke Skywalker. If you didn't notice, Luke goes through the ringer in this movie. He can't use the Force, he can't save his friends, and he can't beat Darth Vader. These failures provide him with obstacles that he needs to overcome, and when he does overcome them in Episode 6, it's more rewarding and satisfying, and the audience is right there with him. Honestly, I think it's safe to say that this movie is the best of both Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader, and it turns them into two of the best characters in Star Wars. And actually, speaking of best characters, you need to watch this video right here, where I found the best character from every Star Wars movie. I think you'll really enjoy it, and thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it, and be sure to subscribe.